All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice coming good. Please invite your friends. Uh, this is, um, as you see in the front of you on the screen, it's like something there is something urgent, something happened. We do not know really what happened, and I hope that's nothing really wrong. Um, because the the foreign minister usually he never do such a thing urgently, you know they have a schedule to do things and they tell people in advance and then suddenly they announce an urgent uh, broadcast for the Department of the State, and when the foreign minister himself he speak it's mean there's something really serious um, to speak about. Um, so we are waiting for the live broadcast and I'm waiting so I wanted to share with you. Uh, and let us see what's happening. I am not sure if this is about uh, what happened with Saudi Arabia. Uh, maybe Trump he made a decision, you know, about uh, about what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm not sure really what's what's going on. So we will see what is the problem. Uh, the journalists are waiting really for long, waiting for the, uh, the the foreign minister to speak. But obviously, it is something very urgent. So let us hope that there is nothing wrong, nothing bad. Uh, I see some Muslims, they are in the chat. And the Muslims always, always is like, you know, they come and they try to bother you with their stupid comments, which does not even make sense, even in the Quran. You know, the Muslims, as long as we are not waiting for this, when the Muslim, he says to us, that you Christian worship one plus one plus one. That's mean Muslims don't believe in the Quran because the Quran says that the Christian believe that Jesus, the son of Mary, he is Allah himself. So why you lie? Even the Quran does not agree with you. Are you accusing your God that he was a stupid? He did not understand Christianity too? So obviously, you Muslim don't even respect your religion. Uh, anyway, let us hope that uh, the foreign minister will come look like he is coming all right until now here we see nothing coming in the screen let us hope it's going to start soon i want to see what this is about i mean this is a kind of uh, worrying um And now I don't see it starting here, but. Uh, first, um, we're encouraged by the high voter turnout in the Afghan parliamentary elections this past weekend. We commend the Afghan security and defense forces and their efforts to facilitate credible elections. There were some technical issues, but despite that, we remain committed to assisting the election commissions, especially in their work for the presidential election that will come in April. Okay. Well, how come I don't hear anything? Is the sound coming to you guys? Looks like there is no sound here. Why? This is a hard hearted stance. Let's not forget that the United States is a historically generous nation when it comes to immigration. Where 1 million people per year are granted permanent legal status here in the United States. Over 33 million people to total are currently here who have immigrated to this country legally. To those who want to come here, come here legally. Legal immigration is the surest way to obtain the better life you're looking for here in the United States of America. From a security standpoint, there is no proper accounting of who these individuals in the caravan are. And this poses an unacceptable security risk to the United States. Moreover, many of these people are ripe targets for human traffickers and others who would exploit them. We don't want that to happen. I've spoken twice in the last two days to my counterpart, uh, Foreign Secretary Vita Gray. We trust that Mexico's leaders know what the best steps are to resolve this situation, and we urge timely action on their part. The United States also has a message for those who are currently part of this caravan or any caravan which follows. 
you will not be successful at getting into the United States illegally, no matter what. I repeat, the caravan will not cross our southern border illegally under any circumstances. If you seek to come here, go through the normal refugee process. If you apply for refugee status, a permanent solution is possible in Mexico or in a third country. But I can tell you with certainty, we are determined that illegal entry into the United States from this caravan will not be possible. Third, the State Department will continue to seek all relevant facts, consult with Congress, and work with other nations, and work to hold accountable those responsible for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. The administration is also taking appropriate actions now, given the information currently available to the United States. We have identified at least some of the individuals responsible, including those in the intelligence services, the Royal Court, the Foreign Ministry, and other Saudi ministries who we suspect to have been involved in Mr. Khashoggi's death. We are taking appropriate actions, which include revoking visas, entering visa lookouts, and other measures. We are also working with the Treasury Department to review the applicability of global Magnitsky sanctions to those individuals. These penalties will not be the last word on this matter from the United States. We will continue to explore additional measures to hold those responsible uh, accountable. We're making very clear that the United States does not tolerate this kind of ruthless action to silence Mr. Khashoggi, a journalist, through violence. We continue to maintain a strong partnership with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Neither the President nor I am happy with this situation. Our shared strategic interests with Saudi Arabia remain. We continue to view as achievable the twin imperatives of protecting America and holding accountable those responsible for the killing of Mr. Khashoggi. Fourth, last week, a delegation of Cuban diplomats threw a childish temper tantrum at a UN-sponsored gathering. At the UN was a meeting highlighting the Cuban regime's intolerance of political opposition and the plight of political prisoners. In response, I've written a letter to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres requesting to know what measures the UN will take to respond to these actions and make sure that they do not happen again. And finally, it's my honor to tell you that Ambassador Dan Smith will become the new director of the Foreign Service Institute, something which I intend to devote a significant piece of my time and attention to as a Secretary of State. This is a very important institution here for our Foreign Service officers. Dan will lead the State Department institution responsible for all of our team's initial training and their continued to professional development. Dan shares my vision. I, I knew him when he was head of INR and I was in my previous role. Uh, Dan shares my vision of having the best trained and most professional diplomatic corps in the world. He is impeccably qualified for this role, and I look forward to him taking the helm at FSI. I'm now happy to take a few questions. Uh, we just have a few minutes for questions today. We're running late for another meeting. Our apologies. Um, I'll start with you. Thanks, uh, Heather. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Um, uh, as a president, as uh, I don't know if you could add color to the president's comments, he just called the um, the what the Saudi operation or the uh, attempt to conceal the worst cover-up in the history of cover-ups. And I'm wondering, one, if you agree with that characterization, and then second, if you could be a little bit more specific about the actions that you're taking with, the, with regard to the visa revocations, how many roughly are we talking about people here? And then on the migrants, what would you say to people who say who would criticize your comments just now as being a bit disingenuous by telling them to apply for refugee status when this administration has slash the number of refugee, uh, the, the number of refugees it will admit. Uh, I said I'd take a few questions. You just asked three. I assume everyone in the room would be very disappointed in you for having taken all the questions. Uh, so let me take the last one first. This is a nation that is historically generous with respect to accepting refugees and persons from all around the world. There, There is no mistaking that. It will continue to be so. Uh, and so those who want to come here legally have every means available to do that. People can also file to be refugees in other countries other than the United States of America. And so um, what we know is this, uh, we're a nation built on laws. We have an obligation, the president has an obligation to protect American sovereignty and to secure our borders to make sure that we know who's coming in out of our country is not only appropriate, but it is a duty of the United States government. We'll continue to make sure that we execute that with great energy and vigor and professionalism. Uh, second, uh, I'll get you the numbers. Uh, uh, we have, but I want to make sure I get them throughout. I'll make sure everybody gets a chance to see the numbers. 
Uh, there's not a lot more that I can say about it other than to say that this is certainly not the last step uh, that we will take, that we will continue to do our own efforts, our own fact-finding to make sure that decisions that the United States makes are based on real facts and real data that we can confirm ourselves. Uh, we'll certainly take information that comes from other sources, the Turkish intelligence services, the Saudis. We will uh, evaluate that information, validate that information, and form our own judgments about the facts, and then hold those responsible accountable based on the facts that we determine are appropriate. We will we will work with Congress. I've spoken to our allies around the world. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone understands uh, that the United States doesn't believe this, that the killing of Jamal Khashoggi was, uh, was anything other than a horrific act. And we hope that we can work together both with Congress and our allies uh, to hold those responsible accountable. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much to uh, talk about Afghanistan election. It was really unique things. We are very happy for that. But unfortunately, Pakistan still do something uh, wrong. You know, the uh, uh, incident that uh, General Razak has been killed. Uh, some reports said Pakistan was behind of that uh, action. Do you think that if Pakistan doesn't change their policy, what will be the next uh, action of the United States uh, to Pakistan to change their policy toward Afghanistan? So I had a chance to travel and meet the new leader of Pakistan not too many weeks ago now. Uh, we made clear that the U.S. policy with respect to South Central Asia, Asia has not changed, that our expectation is that Pakistan will not provide safe harbor to terrorists on their western border. Uh, we couldn't have made that message any more clear and that Pakistan will be held accountable if they, if they don't achieve that, if they're not sincere in that effort. Uh, we don't believe we can get to the place that everyone wants, right? Everyone wants a reconciliation in Afghanistan. And to achieve that, uh, you can't have a safe harbor for, for Taliban, for Haqqani, and for others inside of Pakistan. The Pakistani government knows that that's our view. And uh, this administration has already made uh, significant efforts to hold them accountable, and we hope that they'll achieve the goal that we've set out for them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much. Um, given the president's comment about the worst cover-up ever, does the Trump does the Trump administration still have trust and confidence in Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as a reliable security partner of the United States, or is there a belief that he might have been part of the cover-up and should temporarily step aside until it can be independently established? whether he played a role of any kind in the killing of Mr. Khashoggi. We're learning the facts. And as facts unfold, as we continue to develop our understanding of, of the individuals that were responsible for this, who not only um, executed it, but led and were involved and were connected to it, uh, the world should know that we intend to hold those individuals accountable when we develop that fact set. And we, and we literally hope to continue to learn facts. We've learned a lot over the last few days. Uh, we hope to learn a lot in the next 48 and 72 hours as well. A great deal more in the next 48 or 72 hours as well. Our last question, I, Andrea. Following yes, up, thank you. Uh, President Erdogan said today that this was a savage and premeditated murder. You say you're learning the facts. The president says it's the worst cover up. The Saudis are now telling us that this was an attempt to hold Khashoggi, Khashoggi in a Turkish safe house for two days. Do you accept that explanation? You personally were told one story and it has evolved over the days. So do you think that the Saudis are still covering this up? And do you feel misled by them? You said you're not happy, the president's not happy. Do you feel personally misled by the Crown Prince? The screen will come back again, guys. Just hold a second. So I don't think I've said what it is the Crown Prince told me. I don't talk about those discussions and still do not in, and still and still do not intend to. Um, we're going to accept what America learns. We're going to accept the data set that we're able to develop. Um, we've got people working all, all across the world to figure out what we can know, what's knowable, to figure out which facts we can determine to, to put our own understanding together. Uh, because things like, I, I, I talked about the work that we've asked Treasury to help the State Department with on Global Magnitsky. That's got to be our work. Our, we have to develop our own data set on which we have reliable evidence in order to base such a judgment to find someone as having violated uh, U.S. law. So it will be our work to do. We will, uh, as always, in my former role, uh, all source intelligence. So we'll take in um, all the data set 
but we will validate it. We will verify it. We will learn the facts for ourselves. And, and then we'll, are they giving you yeah, what you need to know? The, 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 the Turks have uh, been very cooperative with us, and the Turks have told us that the Saudis have cooperated with them as well. Has any U.S. official heard an audio tape or seen evidence from the Turks? I don't have I, I don't have anything more to share with you about particular data sets. As we do, I, I assure you, we will continue to keep you informed. As we learn, we will share those facts. And more importantly, you will see the United States hold the persons that we believe should be held accountable, hold them accountable. You you can rest assured that President Trump is committed to that. I'll, I'll take one. I'll take one more. Heather. One more. So the Senate and the House, uh, they signed a new bill uh, called HIPAA now, mm -hmm. so it's now on the desk of the president. Uh, is the administration expected to uh, sign this uh, bill soon or before the midterm election or after? I, I don't know the timing on when the president tends to, to sign that. Thank you all. Have a good afternoon. All right. Well, have a good afternoon, my friend. So, uh, as you see here, they will put some uh, penalty on Saudi Arabia. And for those who speak about Jamal Khashoggi, this guy is not a citizen. He never been a citizen. He is in the state actually for a year working with Washington uh, Post. And he is not even a journalist. This is a big fat lie. This guy, he was a, you know, a special agent for the Saudi intelligence for many years. He was a member of Al-Qaeda. He is a friend of Osama bin Laden. He is a friend for the founder of Al-Qaeda. He is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood now, and he is a terrorist. But just because what happened became too much to let it go, you know, kidnapping somebody, cutting him pieces, etc., etc., etc. So there's a lot of pressure from the media and from Qatar, which is pressing too much with the money. Uh, they spend a lot of money to make Western media speak about it too much. Uh, at the same time, you know, there's many journalists disappear totally from uh, in, in Turkey. There's thousands of people disappear. Nobody knows where they go. Uh, 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 Erdogan, he fired 18,000 people from work just uh, two months ago in one day, one signature. He, they lost their job. So, you know, the, uh, the one who have money, he controlled the news and he put the pressure on a government to do something about something happened. So now they make it a big, the biggest issue in the world. When those things happen always and non-stop, just... Uh, you know, a few days ago, uh, a journalist uh, in, in in Jordan was killed. As simple as that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, he, he made a statement. He posted something in Twitter. After five minutes, he got killed. The U.S. saying the West does not talk about him because he's not sponsored by the Muslim Brotherhood and he is not a member of, you know, of their organization and the money of Qatar is not behind him. So uh, all of this uh, propaganda is Qatar trying their best. This is their golden chance. The stupid Saudi, they make a mistake, and they gave a golden chance for the, the Qatari, who they are their major enemy today, um, to take them down or to hurt them or even to get rid of the crown prince. And as you see, those countries, they claim that they are countries, but obviously they are not. They are just a game in the hand of USA. I mean, how in the world... You asking the, the foreign minister of a country, it's called USA, are you going to force the crown prince to step away? This is supposedly something, have nothing to do. I mean, this is not our business. But because those countries is our toys, the real king of Saudi Arabia is not, is not uh, the king. It's, it's, it's Trump. He is the one who now who can make decision if this guy, he is going to stay as a crown prince or not. Actually, he is the one who decides if this guy he should stay as a, that he is his father to stay as a king. So those countries are really a, a, like kind of a joke. Uh, if USA decide to do something, things will change. If USA decide to change Erdogan, Erdogan will be changed overnight. If Trump he decide, Erdogan will be collapsed. In, you know, Erdogan he made a tweet in Twitter: the currency of Turkey lost forty five percent. 45 percent just a tweet so imagine if you make second tweet and third tweet trump he said uh, uh, thank you erdogan for releasing the priest the second he said that the currency of turkey went up seven percent so those countries they have no stability and it's easy to destroy the rich and the poor so you know saudi arabia is a very rich country but still they are dependent in us in usa security uh, as a Trump, he said just a week ago, if not us, Iran can eat them in 10 minutes. And this is true. 
Iran can swallow all of those countries around Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, you know, Saudi Arabia, you know, in a few hours. They are no match to fight Iran. They are, you know, they are savage, they are uneducated, and they are behind in everything, and they are not united in the same time. And if you go and check the Saudi army, you will see everybody his belly is like bigger than a woman, she is a brunette. You don't have really an army, you know. Uh, uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia, the police guy, you know, if he stop you for, for, uh, you know, if you see, you show him as, as a, like a, a driving license written in English, you say, "What is this? Huh? What is this? Show me something in Arabic." He speaks to you in, Ara in Arabic, you know. He don't know how to read Arabic. You know, he don't even know how to read Arabic. So we are talking about a country behind in everything. In Saudi Arabia, in the land of oil and petroleum, still there is more than 85% of roads is not, it's just dirt. In Saudi Arabia, there is no sewage. So after all the money, more than 80 years of the worth of amazing oil, non-stop money coming from the ground, still this country is behind in everything. And they will never be something. Because you know you cannot buy civilization. You cannot buy. You cannot make people they are civil. If they are not, this is a country based on Bedouin, who they are. You know, uh, uh, I remember a story of a guy. He was driving his uh, his car, and uh, you know I saw him. I said, "Hey, where are you going?" He said, hey, "I'm going." There is a guy. He did not pay me uh, the money he borrowed from me. I will not come back unless he give me uh, the money or give me his daughter. He want to get back his money, so either he pay me back the money he borrowed from me, or he give me one of his daughters. This is what we are talking about. Women, they jump in the back of the trunk. In the trunk. They don't even sit in the seat. The seat is empty. He asked the women to jump in the back. They call it the 1-8, which means like the truck. You know, he have a truck. So women, they sit in the truck. Now, for sure, now like uh, things is is changing a lot from before, but it's still it's you know they are behind. I mean, uh, 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 the uh, uh, women they drove cars a hundred years ago, and now just a month ago, Saudi Arabia allowed women to drive, and until women until now women are not even driving because they allowed them to drive, but you have to get the approval of your parents or your husband. So still they will not be able to drive. You know. So those countries, they will never be something. You know, the, the prince of Qatar, he invited the, 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 the USA and he gave them the biggest base in the world for their army. Just because of he knew that he is nothing. He knew that he had no security. So when the Saudi asked the American to leave Saudi Arabia, the Qatari, they found it a golden opportunity. The Saudi, they made a big mistake. They gave Qatar an amazing protection, which they cannot dream of. And now Qatar is... Uh, uh, is loudly screaming against uh, Saudi Arabia and the Saudi cannot do anything about it for a very simple reason because Americans are there. So the only way for the Saudi to get rid of Qatar government and the Prince of Qatar is to get the approval of Trump. Trump is the one who can change kings, he can destroy countries, he can replace government and this is a fact everybody should notice. And this guy, Khashoggi, is not really because he's important for anyone, but because now it's about a moral. It became a, a, you know, a, a big deal in the media. And the, the, the president, he have to do something. Otherwise, he will look like he is doing a cover-up. So this is what we'll do. They will make themselves as they look so angry. And I don't think anyone is angry. And I think many of them, they are happy that this guy is gone. He's a terrorist. And he killed many people too. So... Uh, you know, they will make like some funny sanctions on, on, on names who they, they will ne never come to USA anyway. It's like, you know, it's like putting sanctions in Putin. American banks, they put sanctions in Putin, but Putin don't have money in USA. Why, why Putin will have money in USA? <laughs> it's like it's like the Saudi, they have, they have sanctions on me. Like, why they can't do that? I mean, this is funny. So, uh, 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 they will do some actions just to make people believe that they did something. USA 
making a lot of money from the Saudi it doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican this is a joke there's nothing here is a Democrat you know uh, Obama and Hillary Clinton they were they they are the one who they are you know they are obsessed with the Saudi and the money of the Saudi so it doesn't matter really who is the one is in charge if it is was Democrat Democrat or it was Republican both of them they will not do any harm to Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia is very important uh, uh, for them and uh, stability of Saudi Arabia is very important for America too because if any this you know like something happened in Saudi Arabia uh, you need to think about the replacement who is going to replace this uh, uh, fake royal family then we will find Al-Qaeda we will find ISIS this is a very radical uh, uh, Islamic country and everybody is an everybody almost is an ISIS you know they have the mentality of ISIS even the one who called himself moderate uh, like this guy uh, uh, Jamal Khashoggi he was asking America to get involved and to attack Egypt so he they can put back the Muslim Brotherhood government so he himself he is involved in terrorism and info involved in killing and he promote war and uh, action of war just for his, the sake of his own agenda because he's a Muslim Brotherhood uh, I believe everything I saw right now in the screen from uh, the foreign minister is nothing but a theater. Uh, but this is something happen always in all government in the world. They have to make the public look like they, we care. But the fact we knew that uh, this Khashoggi is the loss of their concern. First of all, he is not an American citizen. He don't even have a green card. He have a working permit to work in uh, in USA. And that's all he is not a journalist it's a big fat lie he have nothing to do with journalism this guy he been given job he was working with the with the, with the uh, US uh, sorry with the with the Saudi uh, inter the same group who killed him he used to be part of them the intelligence so he spent his life working for the government and from job to job and then they gave him because he is more educated than the rest he speak good English so they gave him a job to be a head of a newspaper, but not because he's a journalist. You see, if somebody says, I will give you a job to be a head of a, journal, a, journal, a, a, a newspaper, that will not make me a journalist. It's the Saudi, the, the royal family themselves is the one who, who gave him that job. He is not a journalist. And then after that, he became involved in you know the, the Saudi Arabia. They use him as a, let us say, as a tool between the liberals to promote their ideas. But by time this guy looked like he was he he, he switched from being uh, from uh, ISIS from uh, from Al Qaeda to uh, uh, to uh, the Saudi intelligence then to Muslim Brotherhood. So look like this guy is moody. He don't have a stability, you know, and that what caused his death because he switched to Muslims Brotherhood. He was always their servant, a loyal servant. But when he changed his loyalty from the Saudi government to the Muslim Brotherhood he had to go and obviously this is this is additional proof that the Saudi uh, government or the whole country is still uh, living in the stage of uh, savagism you, you know they are savage I mean if you even if you want to kill this guy you could not find a better way I mean look how stupid they are I mean, you know there is you know like like the journalist I told you about he was killed in in Jordan he was killed by supposedly by a car accident but we know that it's not a car accident but they can make it happen as a car accident so they are stupid the same as a Prince Diana Prince Diana was killed it's, this is was not an accident it's so clear that it is assassination this woman she became dangerous she is stupid she is filthy and her the crown prince her husband is filthy too both the whole family is corrupt so this woman now she is going to marry a Muslim she is a Britnet she will have a son his name is Muhammad he is going to be the son the brother of a, the prince the, 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 the who is going to be the coming king of England and his name is Muhammad so he had to go so what they do they assassinate her she is a whore but they are no better because you see I'm not defending the uh, I say things as it is the crown prince himself is a, is a cheater of England he cheat his wife she cheat him both of them they are whore whore is not only a woman or is the man too so both of them they are garbage it's a, it's not there's no royal family you see it's it's the, the madness is still that there is people in the world they think there is a royal family 
those who they call themselves royal they are the most garbage people ever you can imagine I remember I watched a program in the B and I think it was like uh, I don't know what channel in England I was in England at that time it was a documentary with, with her she slept with everybody this woman she slept with literally with everybody with the guard with the cook with the with the uh, with the the head of the bodyguard with the driver uh, uh, she go in the yacht she sleep with the captain of the, the yacht she, she uh, I mean she is a whore literally she is a whore yet the people they call him Prince, Princess Diana I mean you see the the, the logic of uh, of uh, of ownership is not exist no more what what make you prince or princess because you sleep with everybody if you are a poor woman and you sleep with someone else they will cover you with shame and they will speak about you especially if you like let us say you get a little bit uh, an important job but just because you are not really you don't have the the cover of a princess so a princess can sleep with everybody but you cannot you know what i mean crown prince of saudi arabia he can cut you pieces chop you pieces make you shish kebab but if i do that they will not discuss if i should go to jail or not they will not discuss if they should uh, uh, do something or not if you go in traffic light and you you cross the traffic light with, it's, 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 it is red you go to jail but hillary clinton she did everything will cause her to go to jail to stay for 10 to 12 years at least but until now she's free and not only that she go for election she was going to be a president billy clinton he took a false oath false oath it's it's a it's a it's a it's a felony you know you go you go up to five years in jail just for the false oath alone he admitted they agree the the the, the judge you know confirmed that he took a false oath but why he don't go to jail if i take a false oath in court i will go to jail i will stay five years this is how the world is everything is false everything is corrupt when you are poor the law will practice will, will practice on you the law is only practice on the and, and the poor one if you are a rich man you go and you shoot 10 people then you you ask the lawyer to uh, to uh, 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 to make uh, 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 let us say um, they pay your uh, you know I don't know what they quite I forgot and you you know they will release you I don't know what this guy is saying again here look like he's I think they are repeating the same thing anyway so uh, just I wanted to share this guys with you what What is going to say? Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen, my friend. Nothing will happen. It's a joke. All of this is just a joke. You know, there, there's nobody will be punished. The Saudi will not be punished. But they have to, you know, they, 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 there is always a, a period of time where, like, the fire is still on. So we have to wait until the fire cool down and people forget about it. And as simple as that. And later they will say there is no proof that the crown prince is involved. And there is no evidence, and they let it go. Even if the CIA have a million proof that he is involved, this is this guy is our servant. He is our dog. Let us say this, you know, if we can say so. So you know, you don't, you don't, uh, you will not shoot your dog and bring someone else dog. This is your dog. So Trump will never do any harm to Saudi Arabia. They are perfectly serving him and serving USA. And as long they are doing that, they will have the protection. All of this you see in the media is a joke, have nothing to do with the reality. And the Saudi, this is not the first time they do that. And all Islamic countries, Erdogan himself, he kidnapped the head of the Kurdish. I think it was from Greece. They kidnap him and he was in Europe. They kidnap him, they put him in a box, and night right now the guy is serving a sentence life, life sentence in Turkey. It's all it always it happened. <clears throat> didn't didn't we go all the way to, to Pakistan and our army airplanes, helicopters, they jump in the middle of the yard, the backyard of uh, of Osama bin Laden where his goat was. And then they capture him, they killed him, and then they dump him with the with the for the fish. This is Pakistan. It's an independent country. Still, we can go and we can assassinate. 
is our enemy so the Saudi this guy is their enemy how come we can't do it they cannot do it he is not a journalist he's a terrorist he have even pictures with Osama bin Laden he have a picture of himself carrying RBG and wearing the Afghani terrorist clothes you know so all those things they say to you have nothing to do really uh, uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh, with reality reality is different from what what uh, what what they say in TV but you know let us say you are upset and now you are the crowd and we want to cool you down so we will say we are going to put sanctions in all who they are involved what do you mean in all those those who are involved they are Saudi live in Saudi Arabia what sanctions we will never give them visa. We will revoke their visa. Thank you very much. We guys, we will revoke their visa. <laughs> the individuals responsible, including those in the intelligence services, the royal court, the foreign ministry, and other Saudi ministries who we suspect to have been involved in Mr. Khashoggi's death. We are taking appropriate actions, which include revoking visas, entering visa lookouts, and other measures. We are also working with the Treasury Department to review the ap applicability of global Magnitsky sanctions to those individuals. <laughs> These penalties will not be the last word on this matter from the United States. We will continue to explore additional measures to hold those responsible uh, accountable. We're making very clear that the United States does not tolerate this kind of ruthless right, right. action Absolutely. to silence Mr. Khashoggi, a journalist, through mm -hmm. violence. We continue to maintain a strong partnership with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Neither the President nor I am happy with this situation. True story. Our shared strategic interests with Saudi Arabia remain. We continue to view as achievable the twin imperatives of protecting America and holding accountable. What is missing in this story that this guy he should say, and this is all proven in Sahih al-Bukhari. This is what is missing. We are going to revoke anyone who is involved visa. Oh, really? I mean, that's amazing. The guy in jail, what, what visa? The 18 guys are in jail. What visa? Are, are they coming here? You will revoke their visa? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> but they have to come in the news and they have to say something. I said to myself, maybe they are going to go in like World War III. What this is urgent. I thought it's going to be really something big. What this is what is this urgent and etc it's this is just to tell us that you are going to revoke visa well nice to meet you revoke visa for who he did not even say to who he said whoever is involved but they will not say that the crown prince is involved hey guys the crown prince i am sure he was watching and he was talking to this guy during the investigation and he was screaming at him saying the f word to his mother to his father and he is the one who ordered to kill him and to make him shish kebab. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to start off by offering a, a somber commemoration. 35 years ago today, a Hezbollah terrorist trained by the Iranian regime drove a truck packed with explosives into the Marine barracks in Beirut, Lebanon, killing 241 Marines, sailors, and soldiers. We will never forget that cowardly act of terrorism or the heroes who came in peace and gave their lives that day. The president just spoke, as many of you know, of five topics I want to address today that will add a color to some of the things that the president said. Uh, first, um, we're encouraged by the high voter turnout in the Afghan parliamentary elections this past weekend. We commend the Afghan security and defense forces in their efforts to facilitate credible elections. There were some technical issues, but despite that, we remain committed to assisting the election commissions, especially in their work for the presidential election that will come in April of 2019. Anyway, guys, I think we are done with this. Um, it's nice to see liars teaching us the truth. And it's nice to see how the world is really upside down and it's not about who get killed it's about who is the killer if you are an important rich person in a high position and you kill somebody obviously you can kill millions and nobody can get into you when they want they will name you as a criminal you will see in the future if any time the saudi they try to play with their tail 
you will see suddenly a video appearing from the CIA proving that this crown prince, he is the one behind the killing of this man. You know what I mean? I am very sure. You see, they are confirming that they use a Skype. I mean, do you think the CIA will not be able to retrieve any uh, Skype? Even if it's life, you see, when you use the internet, everything you do in the internet, it is there. They can get what you did. Uh, so, there is no way the CIA do not know. Especially in such a, you know, a cave time country where it's very easy to penetrate inside and to reach into the heart of the embassy and to get to, to put wiring and to put uh, even cameras and etc i'm sure they hear everything you, you see the the usa they hear every phone conversation in the globe and if you are a person who is a person of interest they record every word you receive your text your phone your messages your etc and you cannot even uh, you cannot do anything about it you know you cannot it doesn't matter who you are uh, this is why you see important figures what they do they don't they don't really have a phone number what they do they choose random number suddenly and they make a conversation and then after that the sim card will be destroyed so nobody can trace them and nobody can know who they are and nobody can find out and by the time you find out it's gone so i was laughing when they said that we are waiting to find out the investigation result i assure you that the cia they they were you know they knew everything was happening there and i will not be surprised if the cia even they knew before even it, it happened uh, but i mean at the end of the day everything is a is a theater this guy he himself is a criminal he was killed he but he was involved in the death of many many people god knows how many thousands and i will not be surprised if he was even involved in 9 11. and i wonder really how this guy even got a job with washington post why simply he got the job because of qatar qatar is the one who fund and the job they don't even pay him he, he they get him a column in the newspaper but he don't get paid from them he get paid from qatar so this is telling us how it work i mean have you ever heard of a newspaper they hire somebody to work for them but he don't get paid and why he don't need to get paid because simply he got the money it's not about a job it's about a voice to speak for the Muslims Brotherhood in USA. He is part. Uh, he is part of this uh, organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, and he was trying to influence USA to get involved to restate the Muslim Brotherhood to establish the caliphate of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is why Erdogan is taking this issue very serious because he is this guy is one of their guys. Erdogan is the Muslim Brotherhood and what happened is against the muslim brotherhood so erdogan is speaking about this and let us say he insists to 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 harm the saudi because what happened is against the muslim brotherhood organization which he, he is one of the leader of this filthy organization uh, but erdogan at the end of the day he cannot do anything except what usa want this is why the head of the uh, the cia went just two days ago and met with erdogan and they come to a conclusion that you shut up you shut up he was going to announce supposedly yesterday or today in the morning he would announce a uh, very important information but then when he made the conference he said nothing new so obviously there's a very a lot um, a lot more information to say and the turkish they discover a lot more information but the cia told them you better shut up or you will bit you will get harmed so erdogan the puppy he shut his mouth and he said nothing no more uh but this is normal you know uh, all all countries in the world they protect their interest and uh, this guy he you know he die uh, he is just a casualty 
right? Anyway, uh, uh, I'm not going to stay long with you guys. Uh, I hope that's uh, maybe tomorrow we will do a live podcast. And until we see you uh, tomorrow again, I say may the Lord bless you. Actually, I'm not going to keep this video in, in the library, maybe. Maybe it's not worth it. But uh, I wanted to share this with you, and maybe it's a good idea to share with you what they say in politics from time to time so we can share together what's, what's happening and we will not be misleaded, you know? Don't ever believe what they say to you, especially those who work in politics. They are professional liars. You see, to be a successful politician, you have to be a professional liar. You cannot be a politician and you are not a liar. You will not even you will not be even accepted to do the job. So you say what you should say, but you don't say the truth. That is politician. You know, the, the people who work in politics, the guy who don't like to see gays, he say in the election, I support gays because he want to win the election. The guy even who don't like when maybe the Muslims, he say uh, Muslims, they have the right, blah, blah, blah. He make a speech to defend the Muslim because he want the Muslims to vote for him. So all of them, they are hypocrites. You know, Obama, when he was going for election, Obama with the Jews, he's a Jew. With the Christian, he's a Christian. With the Muslim, he's a Muslim. With the with, with the atheist, he make fun of the Bible. This guy, he changed his religion. They bent in the in the in the chair he sat in, and this is the case. This is why he was successful as a politician, but he was a failure as a leader, for he never keep any of his promises. He's a liar. He is a, he's a liar in and out. Trump, one of the reasons he is successful. This guy, he says something, he do it. But do he lie? Absolutely, he lie. Like, and here is an example, you know, Trump, he, he is covering up for the Saudi because he have to. USA, they will lose a very important uh, uh, assistant in the Middle East against, against Iran in case a war started soon. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, spending more than $400 billion in the coming two years. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia can affect the price of oil heavily in the whole world. So it, there's many things will make this guy prefer to lie over saying the truth because the truth can cause more damage than the lie he will say. So sometimes they choose to say lie because lie is less harmful than the truth. The truth hurt always. And the truth that all of them, those uh, Saudi, uh, uh, Middle Eastern you know, country government, all of them they are uh, you know, dictators and they kill their own citizen. And they kill everybody. I mean, it's uh, killing a human being there is just like a, uh, like a breaking a, uh, an egg. It's not a big deal and nobody even will mention your name so business is business and this is what it is it's all is about business nothing personal and I believe that what happened it's kind of good so they you know they can put Saudi Arabia in its size again because those guys they thought because they are rich they can go and do whatever they want so now this pressure happening that will make them it will make all Middle Eastern countries rethink many times before they take an action, stupid action, because there is a high consequence can happen. But the Saudi prince is very, very lucky, this crown prince, because Trump he did still approve him to be the coming king. If Trump changed his mind tomorrow, this guy will be very sorry, and he will be kicked out from what it's called the crown prince in five minutes all is in the hand of a trump and i believe it's for the benefit of a trump to keep this guy because at least maybe he's a criminal all of them they are maybe he's a killer but all of them they are but at least he is trying to moderate what it's called the savage country of this or saudi arabia it's a savage it's you know they are still in the cave time living so there's no freedom for anything so he's try he's trying to give some freedom but obviously in those countries, and I am from, from those countries, you know, even the ones who give you freedom, do anything you wish, but don't speak against the king or the president. This is, you know, like even in countries where, where there's a, let us say, uh, there are seculars in the Middle East, if we can say the word secular. In there, you can drink, you can dance, you can go to the beach, you can speak even about religion, but don't ever speak about the king or the president. If you do that, you and your family will disappear overnight.
this is how it is and this is the fact as it is anyway i want to say thank you guys for being here may the lord bless you and until i see you soon again christ is lord and islam is a stupid false religion as you see even their leaders are criminals and there's nothing good in this cult thank you and see you soon again bye bye take care